We're going to talk about altruistic summer reading programs. Good fun and good works. I guess it's a little bit of a contrast from what we just did. Altruistic summer reading is instead of giving out ephemeral material prizes, actually offering your readers an experience as a reward for completing a reading log or doing certain activities at the library. Altruistic experiences are outward focused activities that benefit a cause or person other than oneself. You might ask, why would you do that? Well, it can offer a really meaningful um, experience for your program participants. This also is a way to encourage people to set goals that go beyond their own personal enrichment. You might be benefiting the library or a community partner through um, adding value to something that's already happening, creating new partnerships and creative ways of serving your community. If money is a concern for your district, it can save money to um, do these types of programs. But finally, um, we like to think that without being didactic, we can actually increase people's awareness of charitable causes and show how caring for others is a really important part of our social fabric. And here's the slide that she just talked about. <laughs> you can tell my job was the slide person. I'm not doing a good job so far. Let's see how I am at talking. Sarah just talked about why bother. We want to talk about how you can do it now. First, you need to select a beneficiary, that organization that will benefit from your summer reading activity. The popular, a popular choice is working with animal shelters. Then you need to choose the specific action that will take place. What will the readers do when, or how much will the readers have to accomplish before it triggers a donation to that organization? For example, one can read for 20 hours, and after that 20 hours, they will have earned uh, an animal at the animal shelter to get a grooming. You can set your reading goal higher or lower, depending on your audience, and you can work with your beneficiary to set that level. You can also work with the beneficiary to provide a donation or work with a third party to uh, donate to uh, the beneficiary. For example, uh, Company X will donate a certain number of, uh, when Chris reads 20 hours, Company X will donate a pound of dog food to the local animal shelter. Without that third party, that same scenario would be Chris reads 10 hours and then the local animal shelter will groom a dog in, that, in Chris's name. After you have your, um, your specific actions, you need to recruit your participants. You can offer the altruistic summer reading program alongside the material incentives that you traditionally give out. You can do just the altruistic program or you can do both for all participants. You can also tailor, tailor an altruistic summer reading program to a specific audience by age group. So you have your kids will read to feed the dogs, your teens will read to groom the dogs and your adults will read to spay and neuter the dogs. <laughs> or microchip them. <laughs> or provide operational funds for the animal shelter. <laughs> Once you have your beneficiary set up and you've recruited your participants, it's important to market the program. You can recruit your partner organization to do your marketing for you. It's a win-win situation when the library can promote an altruistic and beneficial aspect of the community, and that community partner can, can in turn, promote your library programs. Our profession is not known for their um, marketing skills and their promotion, so be sure to get out there and talk about the good things that, you, that we're doing in the library. You can talk to your partner organization and show your community that you're a vital part, a vital network of services that you provide for your public. Also share the successes of your program after it's finished, not just with the partner organization because they would be interested to know how many dogs they need to groom. Mm -hmm. You also need to talk with your elected officials, your community leaders, and brag about how awesome a library is and how vital it is to the community. Oh, good. I'm on, I'm on topic with my slides. Um, let's talk about some case studies. The first is going to be from the County of Los Angeles Public Library, and then we'll talk about the San Diego County Public Library. At the County of Los Angeles Public Library, the youth services team developed a Bow Wow Reading Club. For every four hours read, the participants would earn a puzzle piece. There's four puzzle pieces, so after 16 hours using basic math skills, they will have enough pieces to fill in the puzzle. Once they fill in the puzzle, it looks like this. 
That is a very adorable dog, isn't it? <laughs> that is a very well-groomed dog, isn't it? Well-groomed dogs are adoptable dogs, more so than non-groomed dogs. So we really encourage the readers in the Bow Wow Reading Club to read to groom dogs, and then once the dogs are groomed, they were responsible for the placement, possible placement of that dog into a home. They also, the participants also earned a certificate. This uh, recognizes that they earned a grooming for their dog. The County of Los Angeles Public Library partnered with the County of Los Angeles Animal Care and Control Department, as well as several other county agencies to make this project work. The Ultra Six Summer Reading Program at the County of Los Angeles Public Library was run at 10 pilot libraries, and it was altruistic program alone, it was not partnered with material incentives. So there were separate signups and this altruistic incentive and no material incentives offered for those participants. So now I'll share something that's um, been happening at the San Diego County Library. At that library system, um, every summer they do something called Read for a Reason. And in the last few years, the library has been partnering with the different animal services groups. In 2011, readers worked to provide safety collars for search and rescue dogs. For every completed reading log, one collar was donated, and the expense was shared between the collar manufacturer and the County Department of Animal Services. So it cost the library nothing. In addition, the search and rescue operation increased the value of that partnership by providing programs for the library where dogs and the human team members of search and rescue came and demonstrated or discussed their work in the library. These programs were definitely a hit. San Diego County um, advises us that if you would like to involve a third party to help with funding your program, that the beneficiary often can help suggest what that might be. For example, they had a great partnership with a pet food company that donated food for um, the animals at the shelters. So um, we're hoping that as we've been talking, you've been thinking about some other potential partners for your library. We have a list here, some that are local and some that are a little farther afield. There's other ways to partner, obviously, besides just do something in the library and then something happens somewhere else. You can combine those. For example, take your teen council to play games with senior citizens. Maybe you would sponsor a library-affiliated team of both staff and patrons for a charity fundraiser, such as um, the March of Dimes March for Babies. You could have your young readers collect like new children's books to create a collection at a family shelter. You might have a librarians versus readers basketball game at a rec center. I'm not going to guess who would win that one. <laughs> um, a really traditional one has been to reduce library fines when patrons bring um, canned go goods to donate at a food bank, and that could be incorporated into your summer reading club as well. If you like the idea of doing something that's altruistic or has a community benefit, but you're not sure you're going to have time this year to do the work to develop a partnership, we have some other um, ideas. Maybe offer useful items as prizes, such as school supplies, reusable bags, um, bookstore gift cards. At my home library, Lake County Library, uh, the prize at the end of the summer was that a new book was added to the library collection for each kid who finished the reading program. That was a great way that the friends were able to support um, the library. If you're approaching your friends of the library for donations to fund a program, you need to tread carefully. Sometimes there are restrictions that allow those monies to only be spent in your library as opposed to paying for um, dog grooming. But that can be a good way to, um, to develop the community of readers and also a way that rewards kids. Finally, you might think about doing some kind of cumulative project, perhaps add an origami figure to a display, a tile to a mosaic, or even a plant in your landscaping for every completion of the program. All right, let's build on this. I would like to hear your ideas of altruistic summer reading programs. My email is up there, Sarah's is up there, uh, you, you've seen all of our email addresses. We'd love to have a conversation with everyone here about altruistic summer reading programs that you will offer next summer. It's a fantastic idea and we'd love to have a, a collaborative discussion on that. I'm absolutely serious <laughs> about receiving <laughs> emails. I have 15 more slides with just my email address on it. 
and I will go through all of them until you email me <laughs> with some great ideas. Thank you very much. Questions? Does anyone have any questions or comments? The question is whether you have to have a third party that donates to your beneficiary. And you, you do not have to do that if you're working with your beneficiary and they provide their own funding. Um, you can have it work that way. But if you want to involve um, more parties to build that network, you can, depending on your organizational structure. She asks, will there be more information about this on the CLA website? Yeah, the Prezi will be on there as well as a brief handout. Um, you're also welcome to contact people who worked at those libraries, for example, Matthew for the County of LA, and I think um, Jennifer for the San Diego County Library, if you'd like to hear more details about those programs. The question is about how awesome we are. <laughs> Our awesomeness is only due in small part to Prezi.com. Free and easy to use. It's spelled P R E Z I dot com. <laughs> we rehearsed that. <laughs> Susan. The question is, did we have any pushback from those who really wanted the material prizes? Those kids, did they cry if they didn't get a prize? No, they did not. 